Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to the Frantic Talks Podcast, episode 27. I'm showing you a black screen, and that's Grunt. Actually, we're going to put it this way. I'm Frantic, your host, and as with me as always is my lovely co-host. Grunt. And we are here to talk about what, Grunt? Video games and junk. And junk. Ah, there we go, the browser's up. So, uh, the past couple episodes we've been having technical issues, as you probably just saw where I didn't have the actual screen up, but nonetheless, uh, now it's showing, and we're good. Uh, basically, I was, I've switched over to Firefox to capture what we're showing you, because for some reason Chrome doesn't want to work. Uh, if anybody has a solution, let me know. But anyways, we're going to kick this thing off. Uh, if you didn't catch in, uh, tune in last week, we are at half a year last week, and mm-hmm. we are switching to a shorter format where we just kind of spend the first 10 to 15 minutes saying things uh, that are like news and how our week went, and then we get into one big topic. So I uh, hope you're liking that format if you listen to the last one. If not, get ready. It might be a little different. It's a lot shorter. Uh, by about 30 minutes or so, so let's, let's hop in here. Uh, Grunt, how was your week? Uh, I hear sirens around me right now. Is the world ending? <laughs> I kind of hear them, too. Like, I heard it very briefly. I saw your face, like, you're just, like, staring off, like, what is happening right now? <laughs> yeah, because my blinds are closed because it's warmer here, so I'm trying to keep it cooler in the house with uh, mm-hmm. not letting as much sunlight in. So right I'm very intrigued. But my week, anyways, aside from the world in- world ending, <laughs> pretty quiet. Um, I have, actually haven't played a whole lot of games this week. You know, I played Destiny here and there, and then Neverwinter with Freak Show here and there, too, but right. most of it's just been spent doing other odd and end stuff. Browsing forms, you know. Yeah, doing the, doing the deed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes you have slow weeks, it happens. Doing um, the deed. I'm pretty sure that doesn't mean what you think it means. No, it doesn't. I just wanted to say it. <laughs> well, I, for one, have had quite the week, including today. For those of you listening, if you don't know, we record this on every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash franchj3 the third. And that's just because someone bastard took franchj3, but nonetheless. Thank you. Uh, some <laughs> bastard. Yeah. Today is my birthday, so... Ooh. Oh, well, happy birthday, my friend. I'm, I'm a year older. Ooh. <laughs> uh, today's been quite fun, actually. I've been doing a lot of fun stuff, but uh, my week was crazy in terms of not game-related stuff. Uh, I spent a lot of my week doing a lot of things related to the more comic book aspect of my hobbies, ma- mainly just comic books. Uh, first, The first two things, I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys. I don't want to spoil anything for those of you who are actually interested. But uh, if you want to find more information, you can like message me on Twitter or something. But uh, there were two issues of comics that came out this week. DC Rebirth number one, which is kind of... It's not a reboot, but it's essentially ch- changing the DC continuity as we know it and showing us some very interesting information. I could not mm-hmm. be more excited for it because it involves one of my favorite comic book series, and I will not say much more without for trying not to spoil it. And then another issue, uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers, number one, uh, had a crazy big twist at the end. If you that pretty much broke the internet to the point where CNN reported on it, and everybody's like, "Oh my god!" And it's no pretty, way. it's pretty crazy in my mind. I don't want to spoil it, obviously, unless you've already had it spoiled. Like I said, message me on Twitter or something if you want to find out more, or look it up and then talk to me about it on Twitter. Uh, I have very strong opinions about these things, and not in a bad way. I just really, I'm really happy for where both of these are going. Beyond that, uh, last weekend <clears throat> we streamed Rocket League, I believe is what we did. Uh, this past I couple guess. weekends, for some reason, we've been streaming on my buddy's channel, O Corky. Uh, twitch.tv forward slash ocorky and we've been streaming games and getting drunk while streaming them and it's been fun that will not be happening this weekend because it is my birthday today and i'm going to a concert here after we finish recording this but uh we probably will do it in the future more uh streaming while getting drunk it's fun who would have known Uh, drunk souls 3 drunk souls 3 yeah i'll have to pick up that character again because he didn't even beat the first boss (laughs) but (laughs) the other thing i did was see x-men apocalypse thursday night uh it was good uh, I don't think it was as good as Days of Future Past, but it was much better in first class. Uh, I like all three movies, don't get me wrong. I just think this was uh, the Return of the Jedi of the three. So, if anybody knows what that means. And they actually reference that in the movie. It's really freaking funny. They are actually, the movie set in 1983, and they go to the Return of the Jedi premiere or whatever, and as they're walking out, uh, Sophie Turner, who plays Jean Grey, says, uh, they're all talking like, oh, I think this was not as good, or, you know, the fifth one, or uh, Star Wars, uh, Second one, uh, I can't think of the name. Empire Strikes Back was way better or something like that. And then Sophie Turner, or Jean Grey in the movie is her name. I just know her as Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones. She goes, yeah, well, the third one's always the worst. And what's really funny about that is X-Men 3, The Last Stand, which is the third one, is a terrible movie uh, by all accounts. But everybody said it's awful. So they were kind of stabbing at the filmmakers of that because this this is a different filmmaker. This is actually the guy who did X-Men 1 and 2 and then didn't do 3. So he's kind of <laughs> fun of them for that. 
That's oh. Really funny. oh, the slight yeah. little jab there. So that was a uh, sounds like uh, we had both very interesting weeks in our own regard. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, let's move on and get into some of the news of this past week. Uh, so like I said, the format's a little different now. We're going to get into some very uh, quick news pieces. First up is Overwatch. Now this just got released last week, right? Like on Tuesday uh, or something like that. Actually, or the Friday of last week. I think it may have been. It came it obviously it came out in the past like week or so. It's very very if new. Not this week even. I don't remember. Yeah, it, it's very new and basically uh, this story broke that a lot of people were going to Pornhub and other pornography websites to find their favorite Overwatch characters and see them in Rule Thirty Four esque things. Uh, if you've done that, congratulations. I don't care. If you didn't, I still don't care. So that was a thing. And just recently, we uh, this is actually a news report from today on Polygon.com that the porn makers have gotten served with takedowns and copyright infringement policies. So oh, all the cease fun. and desist going out, man. Yeah, stop showing uh, characters X, Y, and Z having more fun than they should. It's basically <laughs> what that says. That's not what that says. It says more than that. But uh, that's interesting. I that is. I find that I very mean, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> Blizzard is evidently very protective of their their properties. So, well, there was that whole controversy over the character who is on screen right now. Um, the tracer is it tracer? Yeah, there was this whole controversy where she had this pose that was you know sexual ah, or whatever, and people were like, "Oh, tracer. now you're just turning into an object." Um, I don't want to, have to share much of an opinion on that because I have my own way of thinking on it. But there were other characters who you could argue were more sexualized, and it seems like it's really weird that this character was singled out. Mm, yeah. If you want to talk more, again, hit us up on Twitter. I'm at franaj 3 He's at Onyx Spartan. We can talk about this all day if you want. I am not hostile. I'm I'm very open to just hearing opinions. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm sure Greg much, does yeah. too. So, uh, next piece, uh, let's talk about Destiny really quick. Our One of our favorite games that we, tend, we focused a lot more on in the past. Uh, basically, there's only a couple things to note. There was a heavy ammo glitch. That was causing it caused Trials of Osiris last weekend to be turned off. Essentially, you could they just canceled it, and they were considering canceling Iron Banner as well. But the glitch has been patched, and thus Iron Banner exists. Yep. <clears throat> and, Started up this Wednesday. So, mm-hmm. are there get any? Your, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Get your Iron Banner ring done. Yeah, I turned ban. Whatever. <laughs> get your exclusive Iron Banner gear and awesome high light level light level drops. I got a 334 chess piece to drop in my first game I think on I my Hunter. That. I think I saw so, your tweet about that. Yeah, that was, that was pretty great. Nice. I'll take that. I have yet to play Destiny since like three weeks ago. I'm kind of sad about that, but I've just been busy. You, yeah. you should be sad about that. I'm very sad. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> other than that, they did their uh, weekly Twitch stream, and this week was a uh, ride along through the maps. And I saw yep. you tweeting about it. It was pretty good, right? It, it was pretty good. They showed a little bit of the process and inspiration um, behind some of the Crucible maps. Mm -hmm. Um, It was interesting because you could see a lot of them changed quite drastically from when they were in production to the final the final form, the final product now. So um, one of them, I can't remember the the exact name of it, but it's uh, Rusted Lands, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Um, It was originally going to be a Vex structure before the final product turned out to be set on Earth, so it was pretty cool. Interesting. That does sound really cool. Uh, you can go watch that. Uh, they save their streams, uh, and if you go to their update, they typically have it there. What I have on screen does not necessarily show that, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Twitch.tv uh, slash Bungie, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's Bungie. So. That's basically it for uh, Destiny at this point. Uh, before we move forward, I want to mention that I totally... Uh, it's based on my other thing I did this week, which was watch the season finale of both Arrow and The Flash. And I will not spoil anything for those either. The Flash was amazing. Arrow was the worst thing I've ever seen. And as you have all heard, I've been very upset with the quality of Arrow, uh, which was essentially my favorite TV show till about middle of last season. So Yeah, I um, remember I remember tweeting, it, tweeting to you that uh, I caught the last five minutes of it because I was waiting for uh, the show that comes on after that because it was its season finale. Right. Um, and I'm like, oh, you know, I wonder if Frantic has watched this at all recently, and you tweeted back to me, first episode I've seen since I quit watching it, worst ever. Oh, yeah, like, like, I, 
Uh, if you're familiar with Reddit synopsises or synopsises or however the bright term is, there are some people on Reddit who will take a take screen caps of the episode and basically give you a recap, a synopsis, but in a funny way where it's kind of like uh, maybe pointing out plot holes or just pointing out really or writing their own funny dialogue that still fits what happened in the episode. And I follow those for Eros. Uh, I stopped. It, it, episode 23 was the season finale, and episode 19 or 18 is where I stopped. And I rejoined 23 just to see how it ended because I'd followed the synopsis and knew pretty much what had happened. So it was it was bad. Hmm. But we're gonna move on to something even cooler that I think was actually announced a little while ago. Yeah, the Pokemon Sun and Moon starters, but I wanted to cover them on here because we're not explicitly Xbox slash PlayStation. Uh, I love I love the crap out of Pokemon. So uh, this article is actually from May 10th, so we're 18 days late, so two and a half weeks. <laughs> but uh, if you actually haven't heard about this, uh, the new Sun and Moon starters, uh, spoiler alert, if you're not watching the stream right now, you uh, will have not heard their names. or They're on screen right now <laughs> if you're watching it in the YouTube video. Uh, anyways, uh, the starters, uh, the spoilers if you don't want to hear this, there is a grass flyer now. So the grass starter is Rowlet. It's like this little owl-looking thing, uh, grass flying. So maybe it'll be a grass Pokemon someone wants to actually start using because no one ever wanted them. Well, that's not that's not true. The question uh, is, does it look like an owl? Yeah, it's it's very circular. Is the best way to put that. I mean, it's like an owl ball. I don't know how to put it. Uh, there, <laughs> there's a fire cat. It's litten. Uh, it can attack with flaming hairballs, apparently. That's oh, a, okay. That's, that's a thing. That's, uh, yep, that's a thing. And then the uh, water starter is a sea lion called Poplio. Uh, so, I just wanted to run over those really quick. Uh, they seem very interesting. I've yet to actually play X or Y, so I'm very behind on the updated Pokemon, but I imagine I'll find some time to catch up and get to play these, because I love the crap out of it. I'm just stuck playing my Gen 3 games, like Emerald and Fire Red, so okay. constantly. I- I'm going to have to do some research into how they come up with the names for them, because <laughs> those are just like they- off-the-wall <laughs> names to me. Basically, the first generation, it was either a play on a word, or it was... Uh... So, like, they have Japanese origins, because that's where they're from, but mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure when they translate them to English, they try to keep them as close to that, and then maybe change them a little bit. So, like, Charmander is a... It's, it's a lizard, but it's essentially a salamander is the best way to put it, so that's where they get that name from. Uh, Rattata is a rat, just with a hat on the end to make it fun. Yeah. Uh, Pidgey is a pigeon. You know, stuff like that, where it's kind of like playing on words. Uh, some of them, like... Uh, in the 6th gen or 5th gen, I don't remember, I think it's 6th, there mm-hmm. is a dish of ice cream that's actually a Pokemon, and it's yeah. called like Vanilla Ice or something like that, and then the of all oh forms like Vanellux, because it's like a two-scoop ice cream. Oh my so, god. So, so yeah. <laughs> uh, if you were ever, if you were upset by hearing that, having not heard about that, I must, I must apologize. Some people aren't a fan of the new stuff. Um, I'm indifferent to it, I have yet to actually mess with it, so... <laughs> Anyways, um... And then we'll get into the last bit here before we get into our main content piece that we want to talk about uh, in this next bit is the Halo update. And I'm not on the update. I'm on the homepage. Whoops, guys. My bad. There we go. Shame on you. You're fired. Uh, yep. I'm done. <laughs> I can't fire you from your own podcast. Uh, we might write something into a contract and let you do it. <laughs> Right, works for me. All right. Um, the the Hog Wild Wreck drop is this uh, smaller update coming, and there's really not too much to cover uh, beyond new skins uh, on screen. You can see them. I'm not going to go through the details. Uh, new visor, two new armor sets, uh, two new skins for your weapons, one at uncommon, one at ultra rare, and then four new or five new emblems. And that's pretty much it, honestly. They're reskinning a warthog in with some warthogs. Giving you, uh, looks like a new scope, uh, the carbine scope on other weapons, so you can get it on, like, your SMG. Uh, some cool armor, which that carbine scope on an SMG actually seems really freaking sweet. It does, actually. That was actually the first time I noticed that as I'm scrolling through. I didn't mention it but to Grunt before we started streaming, so that's really funny. And then they're also updating arena playlists uh, just to give different, uh, just to give redone maps and maybe new maps into different playlists. Followed by refreshing the Warzone bosses by giving them names and meaning. So the mythic bosses you fight aren't just going to be Mythic Hunter number one or whatever it was. They'll actually have names and be a little more iconic. Ooh, interesting. So that seems really cool. And then there's the, the community spotlight. If you're interested in that. So uh, right. that, that's kind of a recap of some of the stuff that was announced this week. Obviously it wasn't everything, and I, we can't really catch it all in the first couple of minutes. But that's uh, a lot of the stuff that 
we're very familiar with. Oh, yeah. That um, is very interesting. Yep. One thing worth noting, and I just thought of it now, mm-hmm. um, I heard earlier in the week that the really wanted uh, PlayStation exclusive game No Man's Sky mm-hmm. uh, has been delayed. I don't know until when, though. That's the bad thing. Oh, I remember <clears> seeing... That was the game that was supposed to be like across like universes and stuff, right? Right. It looked really fun. Yeah. I, if I had a PS4, I'd definitely be looking at buying that one. Gotcha. But yeah, it's been it's been delayed. It was supposed to release later this year, I think. And I think it's been pushed back until next year. But yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that. Gotcha. So. Uh, and then there was also Games of Gold were announced. Uh, oh, yeah. The only one I remember, because it was the only one I wanted, was Super Meat Boy. But it's, surprisingly enough, there was a decent amount of... There's four of them. The two for Xbox One, two for 360. But the, both, the ones that come on 360 will be able to be played on Xbox One. Mm-hmm. So you can basically get all four and play them on Xbox One. Uh, Super Meat Boy is the one for the 360 that I want. And I don't remember I, what the other ones are. Um, for the Xbox One, it's Goat Simulator and um, The Crew, which is a racing game, I think. Okay. It's like an open-world racing game. Gotcha. And then, like I said, 360 was Super Meat Boy, but I don't remember the other one. Do you? Nope. Not okay. at all. I've played Goat Simulator on Steam. Uh, it's dumb. And I think that's the point. It was an April Fool's Day joke that became real. It was basically uh, the it was the April Fool's Day. Steam was like, "Oh, we're gonna make this game called Goat Simulator because there's so many simulators that are popular right now." And <laughs> then some development team was like, "Hey, Valve, can we actually do that?" And I think they were like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" And then so they released it. So that's pretty funny. Okay, so <laughs> <clears throat> let's get into the main topic of this podcast today, and this is something we've actually mentioned, I think, a few times in passing, but never have really covered. I'm going to direct you here to this blog post. Grunt tweeted this uh, to me, and it essentially goes over... It it does it in a funny way, but basically, time playing a game from, you know, an hour of playing it versus 40 hours of playing it, your uh, perspective of it and your overall... Enjoyment. Yeah, enjoyment, that's a good way to put it. So, uh, just some examples he gave it on here, and this was... Grunt sent this to me kind of as a joke... Uh, just because the Star Wars Battlefront was mentioned, and if you've listened to our podcast before, I was very upset with Battlefront. Not as much now because I found out that they were rushed, but uh, which doesn't excuse it, but at the same time does let me see that, oh, this game was kind of stupid and dumb because uh, they just couldn't finish it. Um, right. But anyways, there is a, you know, like it starts off like with The Witcher 3 after an hour. Wow, this is beautiful after 40 hours. God, another 20 blaming iron short swords. Well, at least I can get that, sell them and get a bunch of cash. Uh, so it does similar stuff like that. Some notable ones, I think uh, Destiny was funny. One hour, I can't wait to see this world and experience cool new things after 40 hours. Bungie, please nerf. Bungie, p- p- don't nerf. P- Person of Elder- Elders is too hard. Blah. Uh, apparently it's a spoiler. <laughs> this is in the Bungie uh, thread. Oh, that is dumb. Uh, Battlefield games. That was so cool. I wonder what map I'll get next, 40 hours later. All right, I just got to get 10 more kills for the silencer, and I can go back to running around shanking people to death. Uh, and then the whole reason it was sent to me was uh, Star Wars Battlefront. That match was so cool after an hour, 40 hours. Just kidding. No one played this game for longer than five hours because it's a piece of trash. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. That can, I, I want that to start a discussion here. Uh, basically, and, and this was Grunt's idea, and I just want to roll get the ball rolling. You know, we, we've talked about before how paying $60 for a game, what you should get out of it. And I think a lot of people have different opinions on this. So, for instance, if it's a multiplayer game and you spend $60 on a strictly multiplayer game, what do you want to get from it? Do you want X amount of hours of fun or do you want the game that your friends have for the next week? And will you be satisfied with that? And then you look at it from a single player aspect, like... If I buy this game, and I think we can talk much more about the single player aspect because there's so much more to it, but if I buy this $60 game, uh, if I don't get 40 hours of play out of it before I finish the first playthrough, then it wasn't worth my money. You know, a lot of people have that uh, opinion. Right. And I guess in my in my point, I, I, I don't know how I feel about it necessarily beyond the point of if I buy this game and I play it a bunch, I don't care how long the story mode is. And this has been solidified with my mind when I saw somebody t- talking about Overwatch on a Reddit uh, thread, where some people were like, it's just a multiplayer game, it should be $40, or it should be a free-to-play with uh, uh, similar to like Team Fortress 2 where you can buy stuff. 
And some of them said, well, you know, I don't care. I'm going to spend 60 bucks on it because I know I'm going to get hundreds of hours of gameplay out of it because I enjoyed the beta so much. So I think I, I line with that person more than anything where, you know, the games I play, like Destiny, I think I spent 40 bucks on it and spent 40 bucks on the Taken King. And I've gotten a severe amount of gameplay out of that. Right. Like a lot. I don't know how many hours. Probably, I think it's like almost 10 days of gameplay out of it. Which is a lot. Yeah. But, so that's quite a bit. It's worth the buck, bang for the buck. And then you look at a game like uh, Mortal, or not Mortal Kombat, uh, Star Wars. I'm just looking at my games on the shelf over here. <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront, where we spent eighty bucks on it to get the deluxe edition to get some cool stuff with it. And then I played for, you know, honestly, maybe five hours, like this guy said, where he was just kind of joking. I don't think I played very much of it because uh, there wasn't much to it, unfortunately. Versus the original Battlefront games, where it was more than just some multiplayer, and I only played against bots. I played those for hours. Uh, easily mm-hmm. a couple of days of game play time. So, I don't know. How do you feel about this, Grant? Uh, well, it it's interesting because, you know, you can look at this from two different sides. You can look at it from, you know, the amount of money that you put into it, you know, $60 for a game. And if you're done with it in, you know, maybe a few hours, you know, mm-hmm. you, you're not even really going to probably be playing it for 40 hours at that. And, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure nowadays, don't play a game long enough for 40 hours, you know, as a good example. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because, you know, they buy a game and, you know, they move on to it, they play through it once, you know, maybe run through everything, and then they uh, buy another game that came out later that week or, you know, whatever. Um, But like you said, you need to have something in there, especially for, you know, single player games or games that like have a story or something um you need to have a good something like a good storyline or a good single player or whatever to keep your players for a long time you know and then that's where if you pay sixty dollars for something for like a game and Mm -hmm. you only play it for a couple hours like battlefront five hours you know are you really getting your worth out of it not really yeah it's a but, question of personal worth i think yeah but on the other side you know if you're getting if you play it for five hours you know and you don't uh, how do i say this god this is hard words are hard right now <laughs> if you pay six dollars for a game or you know how much ever Mm-hmm. Um, but you play it for a few hours, and then you go back and continue to play it, but you get a whole lot of enjoyment out of it, you know, mm-hmm. then that's like, yeah, this is worth it. So, you know, and then there's the other aspect to where it's like, you know, I've played this game for so long, it's like, oh my god, enough. I need to move on to something else. Mm-hmm. Which is where the whole perspective um, changing after, you know, the first hour of it, Oh wow, this game's amazing. I want to go over here and play it. You know, oh, I want to go over here and play it. Oh, and then forty hours of playtime later, you're like, God, I just want to be done with this game. And I think that's interesting to note: uh, one hour versus forty hours when it comes to reviews. Mm-hmm. And that, and this is branching a little bit, but I think it's important. Uh, I'm definitely of the opinion that same when you release a review within the first like like the day of release or the day before release or a couple of days before release, I feel like those aren't as accurate as they could be. Now, typically they have a good idea of what's good and what's bad. Don't get me wrong, but someone re- uh, reveal. So, so, I don't know if this happened with destiny, but if someone gives out a review of destiny three days before it came out and you're sitting there like, Oh, they gave it a 10 out of 10. This must be the best game ever. It's like, how do they know that it's an entirely MMO game? So it, it, maybe destiny isn't a good example for this, but uh, for any Call of Duty I've ever seen reviews come out for. Uh, besides the argument that they're paid to give good reviews, let's look at it this way. They come out typically before the game comes out. Call of Duty isn't one of those where they don't send you games to review or they don't let you re- send out reviews until after the games come out because they want you to buy it before you realize it's bad. They're typically, <laughs> they come out beforehand. And anyone I've ever seen is typically ranging from a 7 to a 10. I've never seen a Call of Duty game ranked lower beyond... Uh, typically, like, your, um, 
I guess reviewers who aren't like really big. So like if you were I were to review it or someone with only a couple thousand followers versus IGN that has like millions of followers. Yeah. Uh, I never really see bad reviews for Call of Duty. And Call of Duty is more or less primarily focused on multiplayer. And that's typically what they review in these. They, they come at it, look at the campaign like, oh yeah, it was pretty cinematic. It was fun. Uh, cool story. It took six hours. And then you look at the multiplayer where it's like endless amounts of replayability, quote unquote. That right. Where, when did they get the time to play it? Did they get to play with, like, 20 other people online? Like, the other people reviewing this game? You know, they didn't get to test how weapons are balanced or anything like that beyond their first initial response. No one got the max level in that time, you know? So oh, yeah. how can they review this game and say, you know, it's great? Now, you don't have to get to the highest level in the game and find out what, uh, you know, like, like in an RPG, for example, like Skyrim, if there's a level cap, I don't know if there is. But, you know, you don't have to get to the highest level to know if the game's good or not. And same with, like, a game like Fallout, where after, I'd say, you know, it, it, definitely at 40 hours, you can make a very oh, yeah. good guess as to what is this game going to be received well. But yeah. when you only get around 10 hours of gameplay, um, it really depends on the game, I guess. But I feel like you can't make a good enough judgment call to tell people this is the best thing ever. Right, <clears throat> right. and... A good example of that, I feel, in my opinion at least, is um, Halo 5, you know? The story mm -hmm. felt very lackluster to me. I was very disappointed with it. But then you look at the rest of the game and, you know, the multiplayer and just overall how it is, and it's a very good game in that aspect, mm -hmm. you know? So it's... I'm sure there's a lot of people that have spent easily 40 hours or more, 400 hours probably... Yeah, All right. I believe that. I, I, I guess you could do that, yeah. That'd be insane, but... I don't think it's actually that much. Hang on. I'm going to math real quick while we're sitting here. Keep going. It'd be like 10 hours for 40 days, you know? So. Yeah. And the game has been out for a long time. I know there's people that play it that long. Per day. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how many days of game time that is. Uh, 16 and two-thirds. Yeah. that There's people that have probably played 400 hours worth of Halo 5, I'd say. <laughs> oh, I played, I played more than that on Halo Three. So if, if anyone enjoyed See? it as much as I enjoyed Halo Three, done. See, and then in that aspect, that's where it goes to the whole. You know, you play a game for an hour and you're really, really thrilled with it, and then after forty hours, it's like, yeah, I really enjoy that game. Mm -hmm. You know, here's this list of reasons as to why I enjoy it. So I think when you're debating a game, when it comes to how it is one hour into it versus, you know, 40 hours into it. Mm -hmm. It's a two-sided argument and eh, not an argument. It's a two-sided two -sided conversation, you could say, mm -hmm. where, you know, you have to look, does it have enough content to justify a $60 price tag? That's true. You know, is it going to keep me for 40 hours, you know, um, or, you know, even half of that, 20 hours? Mm -hmm. And even and then, <laughs> yeah. And then there's the other side of it to where you just, am I going to enjoy it enough to want to play it for twenty or forty hours? You know. Yeah, I, I, I think that they are related. Like the sense of will I play this enough versus how much content is in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but those aren't necessarily. Uh, what's the right term? Because it's not mutually exclusive. It's the other version of that. Mutually inclusive, I guess, is the right way to say it. And if I'm wrong on that, someone correct me. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that they're dependent on each other in a sense, but not fully. So, right. so for instance, here's a good example. Last week, for instance, I, I ran into two games, and I mentioned both of them on the podcast: Dragon Age uh, Organ Origins. I said no, Organs. Organs. <laughs> dragon Age Organs. It's like a <laughs> surgery game on a dragon. Someone make that. I'll review it. It'll be dumb. Get to a uh, Bioware. Yeah, come on, by what are you doing? Uh, Dragon Age Origins, and then uh, Final oh, Fantasy. Final Fantasy Type no. Zero HD is what I. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I said Mortal play? Kombat, but Mortal Kombat was the game you played on your stream last week or the yeah, other week. I totally got wasted, but yeah. <laughs> um, no, we. Yeah, I rented those two games, and uh, my initial thoughts on both of them were, uh, well, at Dragon Age Origins. I felt there was a lot to it and I felt overwhelmed, but I enjoyed the time I played it. 
And mm-hmm. I said, me and maybe in the future I see myself purchasing this game. Uh, I like the fantasy, classic, uh, RPG, you know, D&D style role-playing game. I've always enjoyed D&D type things, so uh, I assume it's natural for me to enjoy this game. And then I played Final Fantasy Type-0 and spent the first 30 minutes watching cutscenes, spent the next 15 playing the game, and turned off the game because I just couldn't, I just did not enjoy myself. Right. Uh, both games, I would definitely say, have a ton of content, probably 40 hours worth. Oh, easily. I think I um, have spent that much time playing Dragon Age Origins. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I think it's, in- it's actually Inquisition I have. But still, even at that. It um, might be. Inqu- I don't remember which one it is now that I say that, to be 100% <clears throat> honest with you. It's the latest one that came out, I'm pretty sure. So. All right, I think that would be Inquisition then, because that's the one I've got. Um, it's the one right out of the war room or whatever. Yeah, that's definitely Inquisition. Okay, well then I don't know where I said Origins from. I think I'm just thinking about this convention in June to call it Origins that I'm going to go to, but anyways. <laughs> so, but yeah, you know, I've play, I played easily 40 hours of that game, and I only made it through probably not even a third of the game, so mm-hmm. there's definitely a lot of stuff there, like you said. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm guaranteeing Final Fantasy had plenty of content, because that's how Final Fantasy games work. Oh, yeah. But I literally couldn't get past the first like mission because it was just so clunky and annoying how the control scheme worked and how some of the features of the game worked. And, you know, what's really interesting is, you know, looking up reviews for both of these games, they both got very good reviews. Uh, Type-0 is getting, like, really good reviews, and I'm just sitting there thinking, well, am I the only one who just could not play this game right? Like, the main thing that killed me was the auto-center of the camera that I couldn't turn off. So I'm right. trying to look at an enemy while I'm running, and then I just keep centering my camera if I let go of the joystick. And that wasn't cool. But, you know, uh, more, more to the point, I think what, what we're trying to say here is just because it has a bunch of content doesn't mean you might enjoy it. And like I was trying to say, you know, mutually inclusive or whatever the actual way to say that is, I think we we have to measure what's in the game and also how much we will potentially enjoy it to truly sit and say, can I get a $60 or what should I play a $60 price tag or whatever the price tag is on it. Right. And it's hard to do that having not played the game and only seeing reviews of people who may not have played it as long as they need to have played it. Right. Like, if I go look up reviews for some of the, like, Overwatch or something and someone's given it a 10 out of 10 and they've played, you know, like, 13 hours of it, it's like, is that enough time to play to sit, sit there and say this is the best game ever or, you know, it's a 10 out of 10, go buy it? Yeah, oh, right. Uh, there are people I know the day it came out they are claiming it's going to be game of the year. For them, maybe, but critically, I don't think so. I think there's others out there. Well, I mean, look at that's what a, we... <laughs> that's a different subject. Right, but look at last year when we were talking about Game of the Year awards and Fallout 4 was nominated before it had even been released. And we right. said we thought it would win, and it didn't. Uh, right. That's a whole other issue, like you're saying, but uh, it does speak to it where it's like preconceived notions about something could make your decision for you. Right. Uh, I always am one to go with like a gut feeling. So if I look at a game like... The whole reason I rented the two games last the last time I rented them was because I had this gut feeling of I want to play an RPG game, and these were available, and I thought, never played Final Fantasy, give it a shot, and Dragon Age, I played the first one, uh, enjoyed the little bit of it that I got to play. Funnily enough, it was a rent rental as well, uh, so I was just like, yeah, I'll give it another shot. Right. So. Yeah, and then, you know, another thing is, when it comes to me buying games, um, I'm very stingy with money, so I, mm-hmm. you know, unless it's a game I have to have, like Fallout 4, that's partially your fault, by the way. You're welcome. <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> um, I agree. You know, there are certain, I, I pick and choose which games I want, you know? Mm-hmm. So unless it's a game that I know, like with Just Cause 3, I went out and bought that one on day one when it came out because I like Just Cause 2 and I played the life out of it. I went out and bought Just Cause 3, but, you know, like Overwatch, for example, you know, I have probably 90% of my friends that I play with or know of um, mm. went out and bought the game. Uh, I'm not going to jump on that bandwagon because, you know, to start with, I'm not a huge multiplayer-only kind of person, you know, give me, like, PvE content or, you know, something yeah. like that where... If I just want to shoot something in the face, I can't. I don't have to worry about being the best in the game or, you know, mm-hmm. trying to beat the other team into submission or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
so with like Overwatch, you know, yes, it's fun, it's very enjoyable, but from when I played the beta, except for Bastion, screw him. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it's not a game I'm going to probably enjoy for 40 hours, you know. Maybe that first hour, yeah, it'll be very cool, it'll be fun, then I'll be getting to like two hours of play time, and it's like, eh, okay, I'm going to go do something else, and then, you know, just come back to it every now and then, so... I think with a game like Overwatch, uh, the simplicity of the mechanics might be a good or a bad thing, depending on your re- replayability factor, versus right. a game like Battleborn, where there's, a, it's not infinite, but there's a large number of customization to your character as you go down the skill tree. Right. And you can, when you play through a mission, you know, you can go and choose, oh, I want this skill, whereas last time I chose this one and that didn't work, or it worked, I want to try something different. Mm-hmm. With you know games like Overwatch or games in general that are multiplayer only, to some aspect, you know, Battleborn is multiplayer heavy, heavy, but yeah, um, you know, like you said, it's the simplicity of it can make or break it, and I know it does for me too, because and I want something a little different when I play it. That's why I really enjoy games like the Assassin's Creed series. You know, I have my genres I stick to. And I enjoy, but you know, I'm also willing to try something different or maybe a different game in a genre I like. So, yeah. Um, another thing about simplicity, though, uh, sometimes it can work to your benefit. So, looking at, uh, so for instance, you ever played the Impossible game? Uh, no, but I've heard of it. Okay, there's a, there's that, and there's this game called Super Hexagon. Two games that are so simple. So freaking simple. Yet I've played them longer than I've played some games like Dragon Age, for instance, where there's a lot of content. Uh, and just to give you an idea with Super Hexagon and uh, uh, Impossible Game, or Impossible Game, you're just a side-scrolling cube that goes at the same speed, and you have to jump over other cubes and triangles. And then they come in more complex forms, like platforming cubes, where they're just stacked cubes that you have to jump up on, because the ground's like lava, essentially, but it's just a black bar. It is the simplest of simple games. There's four levels to it, and then there's a level builder where you can make your own. And I've played that more than I've played, I want to say, Halo 5. <laughs> wow. You know, and Super Hexagon is uh, similar. You're just this little tri- you're this little triangle on the screen that can move around in a circle, but there's hexagon, there's hexagon-shaped things that, like, they're like little bars and stuff that come on screen that you have to dodge. And right. you, uh, there's six levels. Uh, and you have to beat the, the first level to unlock level four, second level to unlock level five, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and they just get faster and harder with different music. And again, I've played that, I think, a 10 or 11 hours. It's so simple, but so challenging and so fun. So that's where simplicity can be a good thing. And I guess that's where it is up to you as the listener and as the gamer to decide and see if a game is really worth what you'd be paying for it based on how much you think you will like it off the information you know. And, you know, it's hard to sit here and say, uh, don't spend 60 bucks unless you know you're going to like it without having played it. Right. So, <laughs> I I think that covers a good amount of it in my mind. It's just like, this is always a topic I've seen discussed plenty of times where, you know, a lot of people want a sh- like a crap ton of content in their game, and if it doesn't have that, they don't want to pay the full sixty. And right. usually, you don't have to if you wait long enough. But uh, part of the sixty dollars, I believe, is getting it when it comes out to play with your friends, or just to have it and talk about it the day it comes out instead of having to wait. Uh, right. Because human beings are impatient little assholes. But and more of the point. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's an interesting conversation that if. You guys want to talk more about this and send us some tweets. Like I said, at Frank J3 is me. Over there is Onyx Spartan. I pointed at you. I know you can't see me. Uh, for those of you watching, he can't see me. I can only I can see him though. It's the weird yeah. work of streaming this. <laughs> uh, I see your Skype picture, so yeah. So I just uh, imagine I'm talking to you through that. So it, that that works, I think. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I definitely want to extend the conversation to everybody listening. Uh, I want to try this out for the first time. I never really have done this beyond saying talk to us. Uh, what's your opinion? Does the game have to have 40 hours of content? Uh, is it not as is it not as black and white as lots of content or little content will sell it for me? You know, we want to hear your guys' opinion because 
uh, it's one thing for us to sit here on our soapbox and go like, games need X, Y, Z, and we'll only buy them if that. Ah, uh, communism. And you can instead <laughs> <laughs> just start the conversation with us. So uh, let us know, uh, and you can join our Twitch streams where we'll definitely talk to you guys about whatever it is you want to talk about related to what we're saying. Uh, Twitch streams are every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv forward slash franicj3 the third. So, that being said, we're at about 40 minutes here. Uh, I think that's about a good place to probably call it quits unless you have a little bit more to talk about here, Grunt. Uh, not really. I pretty much said everything I I have to say about the subject matter. So it's it's a it's a complex issue. It's I don't think it's as black and white as uh, if I've played it for 40 hours, it was worth buying. Because uh, there are okay. some games that maybe if you invest 40 hours into it and you just haven't had the fun that you've had, wasn't worth buying. I don't know. I felt that way about the late the last Call of Duty game I bought where I invested, I don't know, I got to 8th Prestige and invested a lot of time into it, and then by the end of the day, I was just like, I don't know why I just did that. <laughs> I was right. like, I wanted to like it, and then in the end of the, by the end of the day, I didn't. You just, you just couldn't. Yeah, I, just, I really couldn't. All uh, right, yeah. So. I think I think that's why, well, uh, one reason especially, that I'm kind of distancing myself from the Halo franchise. I'll always love the series, so, you know, I'll go back, I'll probably mm-hmm. buy Halo 6. Um, but... You know, I played Halo 3 for so much and so long when it came out. And then I did the same with Halo Reach. And by the time 4 came out, you know, I just, like, uh, there's other games I want to play. So I'm not going to make this that much of a time sink. Mm-hmm. So. Ugh, yeah. I, I feel uh, you on Call of Duty there. It, it, like I said, I don't think it's as black and white as we may have made it seem, uh, so I apologize for that if that is the case, but uh, we definitely want to hear your guys' opinions. So uh, I'm going to do the advertising this time, Grunt. So Go ahead. I made you say video games and junk. I feel like I can take the torch. Uh, <laughs> Passing the metaphorical torch to you. Oh, let me, oh, wrong way, wrong way. Oh, over here, thanks. Oh. Hey, I got it now. Oh, <laughs> man, I really wish I had like a torch just like sitting over here that I could just like pull on screen. Hey, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You like go it, buy a torch after this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's not a bad idea. We had to let no, we had to buy it off of Amazon and buy the same two torches and ship one to you, ship one to me, and then we can pass our metaphorical but actual torches back and forth. That sounds like oh a lot of fun. God. We're gonna do that one day. One we really day. are, and that's kind of the sad thing is that anything that we've ever said on this podcast, jokingly, eventually probably it always happens. comes true. Yeah, it does. <laughs> All right, uh, let me get this uh, quote-unquote advertising out of the way, but it's not advertising. It's literally just saying, come follow us wherever we are. Um, please don't actually do that in real life. That'd be really weird. But anyways, uh, I'm at FranticJ3 on Twitter. He's at Onyx Spartan. I keep pointing to my right because you're on the right side of my screen, but I need to point to the left because that's where you're at on the actual screen. Point Over there, left. this dude, left. this guy, I'm like really pissed off now. <laughs> He's at, uh, at Onyx Spartan, O-N-Y-X, and then Spartan, as usual. Uh, all one word. And then our official Frantic Talks Twitter account, Frantic underscore Talks, where you can totally check out uh, us tweeting about more than just video games because we have a magic side of the uh, Frantic Talks entity. I guess uh, I don't know the right word to say there. Uh, the Frantic Talks community. I don't know. Joy Wait, community. Yeah, sure. Uh, Magic.FranticTalks.com is where you can check out Magic the Gathering articles and podcasts. Yes, I said podcasts because I started up one where I, I've been just kind of driving to work and talking about stuff. And that's been fun. I actually have... I just released a no one this past Wednesday. I'm doing it every Wednesday. Uh, depends on if it's going to be morning or evening when those come out. But uh, I aim for Wednesday. Uh, last episode was... Re- uh, last episode, parts one and two, was really good, I think. Uh, hoping to get some good feedback. Moving on to other things. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash frantic talks. All one word. Uh, you can find where we post typically the podcast and articles there, too. Uh, it's been a little less active because I don't... I'm not on Facebook anymore. So I tend to forget to log in and do that. But it's okay. I see. That's, that's what happens. Uh, I should probably log on there today, though, to check out the hundred of uh, hundreds of happy birthday messages I got, just to get rid of those notifications. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. Thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. I'm just like I'm not there anymore. <laughs> I'm just like a ghost account. Uh, and then uh, let's see here, Brandtalks.com. If I haven't said it already, that's where all the podcasts, all the articles we write go up. Uh, will be. In the mothership, we'll be having a facelift very soon. I'm actually getting progress on that, including mm-hmm. a potential new logo. Ha ha ha! That might be fun. It might not be. I don't know. Fancy. If I could actually get a font to download to my computer, I would totally do it. But you know, 
that's been fun. And then uh, I said Twitch already, twitch.tv forward slash frantic j3 the third. Did. Some bastard took frantic j3 every Saturday, yep. 3 p.m. Eastern. And am I forgetting anything? I feel like that's basically it. Oh, there's a YouTube channel. That's where all these podcasts get uploaded. The Magic podcast doesn't get uploaded there because there's no video to it. Uh, but I also had a Nuzlocke series for Pokemon. I said I like Pokemon. It's actually true. There's a Nuzlocke series that I haven't gotten to continue yet. Uh, you know, that whole being busy thing happens. So, yeah. that's you where you can should, find us. You, you should totally mention the Magic site, too. I think I said it, magic.franitalks.com. Yeah, well, there it. you go. Mention it twice, just in case. Hey, you know, if you like Magic the Gathering, man, I love it. It's, it's pretty awesome, actually. Here, is there a stack of cards I got today? Like, That was like 80 cards, too. So, I, it, those cards look amazing. It's a healthy addiction. I'll show you when we turn off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> what happens afterwards is uh, Frantic Talks After Dark. We might start that up soon. No, we won't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. We, we've been rambling for like five minutes now. All right. Uh, that's about it for us. Okay, guys. Uh, like I said, there's where all you can find us. Give us a follow. Give us a shout out. Give us a tweet. Whatever. We'd love to talk and hear your opinions because uh, you're the whole reason we're even doing this crap. Yep. As if we don't um, like what we're doing. Let us know what do you think about games after games compared to playing it for an hour and then after 40. Yeah, and <clears> games <throat> after dark. I want to hear about that too. Whoop. All okay, right. We covered that in the beginning. Rule 34 Overwatch. All of it. Let's hear about it. <laughs> Man, I mean, maybe you want to hear about it. Not me necessarily. Circle. Windmill in my arm right now. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm Frantic. I'm Grunt. We'll see you next time.